Please listen carefully. Well, hello, universe, and welcome to the Optimist Daily Update. I'm Christy Jansen. And I'm Summers McKay. And we're part of the team behind the Optimist Daily, making solutions the news. We bring you reader-funded solutions news every day in order to change the tenor of news media, social media, and the direction of your day to help us all get focused on what's going right in the world. Seven days a week, we publish positive news stories written by award-winning journalists and delivered online to your inbox and through our social channels. And also, we are sharing these solutions in a commute-worthy, walk-worthy, home office-worthy, little Saturday-worthy podcast. <laughs> I love it. Today is Wednesday, the 5th of January, 2022. <laughs> Hi, Christy. Hi, Summers. Happy New Year to you. This is my first pod appearance of this New Year 2022. First pod back. How were your holidays? My holidays were really nice. Mm-hmm. It was great. It was a great, I mean, granted, there were some ups and downs with some canceled parties because of Omicron, but we were able to make it work. And I did get to spend both Christmas and the New Year with my extended family, uh, you know, with a bubble that we had put mm-hmm. together. That also included rapid tests, which we had some foresight to get our hands on beforehand. So that was good. And knock on wood, so far, nobody has actually gotten exposed from our parties. On the other hand, some of my close friends were not able to participate because they had an office exposure right before the new year. So that was kind of a bummer. But Mm. yeah, this is an interesting world we live in. That promotes uh, flexibility of the mind and not getting too yes. attached to any kind of an a- a outcome, right? To any kind of an outcome. You know, that that's what we really wrote about the optimist in the optimist view on Sunday, which if you're an optimist daily emissary, you get a long form thought piece on Sundays. And one of the trends that we really do like to see going forward is this flexibility, right? This this knowledge that going backwards is no longer the goal, that we're not going to go back to a pre-pandemic world. We're going to go on to some new and different expansive world with a lot more flexibility than perhaps we ever intended. <laughs> yes. Yes. And it's about creating new traditions. It's mm-hmm. about creating new habits, new trends, mm-hmm. new possibilities, right? Getting right. focused on the possibility. Right. So anyway, that, to answer, that's the the long answer to your short question, how was my holidays? I embraced the moment and enjoyed myself. Good. Well, everybody is sort of clawing their way back into work weeks and schedules and routines. And it's been funny because yesterday and Monday were the first days that I'd had childcare. <laughs> In 19 days. Mm-hmm. And I got so much done in the morning. And then the afternoon, I, I was like, I don't know what to do with myself. <laughs> on Monday, I don't. Monday, Summers called me at like 730 my time because she's like, okay, I'm ready to work. I'm like, okay, I haven't even taken a shower yet. <laughs> <laughs> I was just bouncing with enthusiasm. I will say that I am pleased that my daughter has also been bouncing with enthusiasm to get back to school. Um, so that makes a parent feel really good, right? When, um, you know, the, the traditional holiday song of mom and dad can hardly wait for school to start again. Sometimes kids can hardly wait for school to start again, too. <laughs> So well, my son was not happy to go back to school. I mean, he was fine, right. but he was, he was, yeah. I was like, Hey, you look forward to going back to school. He's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, my, our big kids have not yet started school. And uh, so they, they have a few more days and we're going to, we're going to actually continue to celebrate our Christmas holiday because we didn't get a chance to do gifts with the big kids when we were in California with my whole family. So my my Christmas is still continuing um, in sort of a funny rushing to the airport to collect people before they go back to college and high school situations. But so, speaking of <laughs> celebrations and ongoing celebrations, yeah. you want to start with your headline yes, first? I will start. It with is my Wednesday. Headline. Exactly. Since it's hump day. So my headline is really fun because it really speaks to. What I was saying about people sort of finding their way back into traditions or back into work and back into routines, but perhaps not being totally ready for it. My headline reads, this Wednesday, embrace the Swedish winter tradition of Little Saturday. 
Now, this tradition kind of reminds me of Boxing Day and some other traditions, but in northern Sweden, where the winter season means up to 20 hours of darkness a day, staying positive during colder months can be tough. But fortunately, residents of these parts of the world have come up with a variety of strategies to make winters more fun and cozy. One of these strategies is called Ilordag or Little Saturday. I probably butchered that because I don't speak (laughs) Swedish. But the concept of Little Saturday dates back to when servants and maids actually worked on Saturdays, but had Wednesdays off. Today, many Nordic cultures treat Wednesdays as a day of mini celebration and fun to blow off steam and boost morale during the long, dark days. Pubs offer Little Saturday discounts and families can choose to celebrate with campfire or traditional Delicious treats like oysters and champagne. Yes, please. Something like Little Saturdays can be really good in helping people create structure and fulfillment even when they're feeling lost. If you're feeling burnt out or discouraged by the depths of winter or the blurriness of returning to work or the confusion and joy of your children being back in childcare, adopting a Little Saturday tradition could help you recapture some of the winter magic and sense of community. So I actually am going to do a little Saturday today with some classmate parents of mine. Actually, this afternoon, we're going to go have girls wine before we pick up the kids from school. (laughs) Nice. (laughs) It's it's the designated driver. Yeah, exactly. There is a designated driver. It will be a well-managed situation. It won't be a (laughs) wino situation so much, but This also kind of reminded me of another tradition that I love, which is Little Christmas. Little Christmas is actually tomorrow, January 6th. And what Little Christmas represents is like technically the day the wise men showed up with the gifts. It's the end of the 12 days of Christmas. And I have always kept my holiday decorations up until the end of Little Christmas. So I like it. I'm going to have a little Saturday and a little Christmas and roll through the rest of the week. And then it'll be TGIF and on to the full start of 2022. Right. right. Well, so. yeah, I, a little Christmas or, I mean, it's not called that, but the the wise men, that's a tradition in Latin American countries as well. I know mm-hmm. my husband is from Mexico and when he was a kid, that was the big celebration. It was they, on January 6th. Uh, yeah, yeah. That was when they, yeah. they'd give the gifts because Christmas Eve was a feast, but then they would go and spend it in mass, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. at, at the, exactly. At the you have to be at church all day. Right. right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's definitely, you know, the season is still here. We're still celebrating We're little still little Saturdays and little Christmases. And, uh, you know, it's still kind of unpredictable, though. It right? is very unpredictable. And as you shared and as I shared, and I think um, all of us are aware that, you know, best laid plans doesn't always work out the way we think. <laughs> We were going to have a, a, a holiday gathering that we had to cancel because Omicron was making people too uncomfortable. Companies were planning to go back to work starting this January, and that got delayed. Travel's been delayed. All of the flights have been... Um, Something like 10,000 flights were put canceled. Put into turmoil. Yeah. And, you know, the world is just not used to this. No. And it makes us all really uncomfortable when when our routines get out of whack. Because as soon as you're an adult, and even before you're an adult, we just like routines. We, we're we kind of lazy. Our brains are kind of lazy. We like it when things just run as they are. And we just sort of take it for granted. We know what time we get up. We know where we go. We know where we drive. We know school's going to be open. School's going to be safe. Work's going to be open. Work's going to be safe. And right now, that's not happening. Mm-mm. And it can create so much anxiety and stress and a sense of being out of control. But there are ways to maintain our mental health, even in times of unpredictability. And that is the headline that I am highlighting for today. And it, the actual headline reads, Six Ways to Maintain Mental Health During Unpredictability, which is what we're going through right now. But this article has a couple of tips for strategies, tools that you can employ when it feels like the world is a little out of control. So here are six practices that might help you stay grounded as we venture into another year of uncertainty. First of all, set small challenges for yourself. Give yourself little reminders of how competent and how capable you are. And so one way of doing that is by creating a little stress test, a little a little something for you to uh, complete which reminds you of the fact that you can complete. So research shows that more experience Hmm. we have in overcoming small obstacles that we set for ourselves, the more prepared 
we will be to stay steady in the face of higher stake problems in the future. Even. So like clearing out my pile of Christmas card mail. That could, could be one, one of these. That's a little yeah, challenge that will make me like feel really so challenge. much better. You know, maybe just, you know, doing six sit-ups or something <laughs> or finishing the chapter of the book you're reading or anything or just clearing out the shelf in your cupboard, um, you know, accomplishing something, setting a goal and accomplishing it that's very small gives you that boost of confidence. Another surprising one to me, I think is really smart and easy to do is just stand up more. There was a study published this year in the Sports Science for Health that revealed that people who stay seated for more than eight hours a day experience worse stress levels and mood levels, and their overall sense of well-being can get uh, lower, even if you're getting the recommended 30 minutes of exercise a day. But those long extended periods of just sitting actually depresses your mood. So just mm. standing up mm -hmm. regularly through your day, you know, going in. I, I like to take Tucker for a short little walk sometimes when I need to think. I'll, I'll say, oh, I gotta, I'm gotta. i working on this problem. I'm going to go walk the dog and think about it when I'm walking. And that actually helps me get to the next phase of my work. But anyway, eating a Mediterranean-inspired diet with mm -hmm. staples like leafy greens, olive oil, berries, seafood, all those brain-supporting vitamins and fatty acids and healthy fats, that can I'm help. I'm going to do that for lunch today. I'm yeah. going to have a salad with olive oil, strawberries, and maybe some salmon. That's I'm gonna, I'm gonna be Mediterranean diet girl today. Can I come over and then I'll join you and your mommy wine. Yes. And you can exactly you can come to mommy and wine after. It'll be perfect. <laughs> just one glass. Remember, blue zone rules, just okay. one glass. <laughs> yes. No, I'm just joking. But but that also helps you boost your mood, getting that those good fats in your in your brain and good gut health. Another mental practice is just reflecting on the wins, on the accomplishments, the, even the small things. When we get down, we always are the worst critics of ourselves. Yeah. And this can nudge us toward dwelling on all of the things that have gone wrong. That's sort of counter to the Optimist Daily mission, where we like to turn our focus to the things that are going right and our successes. And there's a, a study that was published in the journal Emotion, which scientifically found, which we know from practice, focusing on a moment in our lives when there's a success, even if it's a small win or something that you, you accomplished in that day can actually help us feel better in a general way. And the more we have that boosted sense of purpose and self and ability, the easier it is to handle even big, uncertain you know, changes and to sort of be able to roll with the punches. Another tip or our fifth tip is to call a friend. Having a good conversation with somebody who is in your corner lowers your cortisol levels. It's actually been shown to lower cortisol levels. So that's super important. You know, I was listening to an uh, interview on NPR with a neuroscientist about basically preparing the brain for aging. And one of the key things that for mental health is no question social interaction, which unfortunately yeah. the pandemic has really made social interaction right. different. But social interaction is absolutely essential for mood and health and sort of mental right. health of our and nation so even, or of our world. Even yeah. in a context where we're staying away from people for mm -hmm. whatever reason, whether we're socially distanced or we're living in places where our friends, we have a lot of close friends who don't live in the same neighborhood anymore, like um, friends who move to a new city in the middle of the pandemic. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, creating a practice where you you make it you make an effort every day to call like three friends or you know just even just have a little check in. If you make that a habit, that can really help to smooth out these uncertain times. It could be your your mom or your sister too. It doesn't have to be a a, a friend. Although friends can be great, but it can be somebody who is in your corner. Yes, uh, exactly. And the final takeaway from this, the final tip it's just getting out in nature. Take a walk in a green space or in a natural space and go hug a tree. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> forest to hug our trees. There is plenty exactly. of evidence that suggests or that shows that just being in nature boosts mental health and mood. We write about this a lot on the Optimist Daily. This particular article references a study from Germany that discovered residents in neighborhoods with more trees reported using fewer mood balancing aids, whether that's alcohol or antidepressants or mm -hmm. cannabis or whatever you are using to, you know, balance out your moods. If you just go into nature, even just sitting in it and listening to it has been shown to lift moods. So yeah, exactly. 
In addition oh. to all of these great <laughs> strategies, reading the Optimist Daily, we actually have proof that reading positive stories and inspiring stories lifts a mindset and can lift a mood and help you get through unstable times. Other stories today on the Optimist Daily include Ancient Knits Aid Uncovering of Human Ancestry. Japan unveils the world's first ever bus and train vehicle. Who made it to Mars in 2021? A new approach to treating brain aneurysms. Christy, what Hmm. else? Well, if you haven't decided on New Year's resolutions yet, if you are a resolution person, we offer eight eco-friendly options, ways to maybe lower your personal carbon footprint. There are some designers in Thailand turning elephant dung into bricks. Yes, that's what we always like, you know, turning (laughs) trash into treasure. (laughs) Trash into treasure. I just, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) The world's oldest person, Kane Tanaka, celebrated her 119th birthday. Wow. And there's a simple exercise that you can do on a daily basis to improve brain power. Go check it out on theoptimistdaily.com and get smart, get intelligent, get uh, curious. That's what we like to encourage here at The Optimist Daily. Thanks, everybody, for listening to The Optimist Daily Update today on this little Saturday, January 5th. We promise to keep sharing positive solution-based stories with ideas on how you can participate in the changing world and ensure it is changed for the good. We promise to keep covering current events with accurate, legitimate sources and offering you the information we all need to chart new paths. If you are not already, please consider becoming an emissary on theoptimistdaily.com and for just $5 a month, support reader-funded independent journalism. Help us be the solution changing consciousness and addressing our world's biggest challenges with a problem solving mindset if you can if you have the means help us keep the optimist daily free to all who need it supported by those who can thanks everybody for listening christy welcome back and we'll be back tomorrow with more solutions